What's up, everybody? Here we are, Vox and Hops, episode number 16. I hope you all had a great week. I know that I did. I've been getting uh, used to this colder weather up here in Canada. The snow is coming. Uh, it's, it's, it's Canada. It's, it's, it's cold. It's uh, snowy. It's, it's, it's the way it is up here. Today on Vox and Hops, episode number 16, I sit down with Jason Melodonian. He is the fantastic guitarist of the band Cytotoxin. Uh, we were on tour together this past November in Europe alongside Benighted and Aborted. Um, I was a fan of the band. I had heard of them uh, when they released their previous record, which is called Gamageddon. And uh, I was uh, initially hooked. Uh, they reminded me of a Beneath the Massacre meets um, Aborted meets uh, Archspire. Uh, really liked it. I thought the vocals were very uh, intense. Uh, when I saw the band live, I was blown away. Uh, this singer walks out on stage. He is enormous and extremely, extremely cut. And he pulls off his shirt. They're wearing gas masks. He's screaming with the mic inside his mouth. And then t to his right is this guitarist, this fantastic little lead guitarist. His name is Jason Melodonian, and he is just a sick, sick guitar player. So we sat down. Um, this whole interview took place in Prague. It was a sold-out show. That was a sick, sick show. And um, me and Jason, we shared a Pilsner Jochkel and chatted about uh, how he grew up in a, in a tiny village, uh, how he discovered extreme death metal by joining Cytotoxin because he wasn't aware that this was a... He hadn't discovered or really dove into extreme metal up until that point. Uh, we touch on a little bit uh, about w what it's like being vegan on the road and uh, how we can cope and how that works out on this past run. And uh, we talk about his day job, which uh, unbelievably the, this, uh, this guy is a chemist. So check all that out and uh, all that and more coming up right now on Vox and Hops, episode number 16. I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Today I'm with Jason from Cytotoxin. I don't know your last name. I'm an asshole. Um, <laughs> my last name is Melidoni, and actually it's a Greece name. So my grandfather is from Greece, and yeah, that's where the name comes from. Your grandfather is from Greece? Yes. Okay, and he is uh, an excellent, excellent guitar player from uh, Cytotoxin. Uh, Thank we you. are here uh, on tour in Europe together. Today we are in Prague, and we're playing our fourth sold out show in a row. At least. Yeah. yeah, on the uh, Hell Over Europe tour uh, with aborted uh, Cryptopsy, Benighted, and Cytotoxin. So, how how have you been feeling about this tour? Um, this tour has been like probably the highlight in my musical career. So it's it's our second bigger tour, and it, it's it's amazing. So, um, aborted is probably one of my favorite bands in death metal, and it's an honor for me to be a part of this tour and yeah we we've made friends with benighted and aborted during the last years and yeah it's 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 a pleasure and i enjoy every second of this tour so tell me about um you say this is your second tour what was your first big tour in europe the first big tour was last year together with ingested and condemned and a turkish band called canofage and yeah so the, this was the, the first European tour we did and basically the same countries as we tour um, this year and yes so the venues were smaller back then and there weren't too much people coming out compared to these tour here so um, but still it, it was a nice experience and I felt that yeah that I want to tour more so first I was a bit afraid how how touring would be and if I like it or if I yeah um, can handle all the stress or, or whatever but after the first tour I felt like yeah that's what I want to do and so I was super stoked when we finally announced that we can be part of Hell Over Europe too. It's, it's a strange thing touring because uh, there's a lot that goes into it mentally yes. that, that people don't seem to comprehend when you know, you're not a touring musician. So uh, let, let's name off some of the things that you would find difficult about touring. Um, 
I think the difficult part is probably sleeping or to to handle the the lack of sleep and still to to bring a good performance on stage even if you're maybe like like tired or exhausted or or whatever so um yeah I think that that's one of the difficult parts for me just to go on stage make the best performance you can do and just forget about stress or like issues while sound checking or if you're not like warmed up which is a big issue for for our band so um if we are not having the time to warm up it's it's getting complicated for us <laughs> <laughs> for, for everyone listening cytotoxin is a very technical band <laughs> yeah and, and i would i would say that you're probably one of the cleanest guitar players that I've, I've ever heard or toured with. Very <laughs> precise. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't hear. The, I'm sure you hear mistakes, but of course, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't hear them. Yeah, I, I just try to practice on tour. So, um, still having this routine, and this, this helps me a lot. So, even if it's just one hour or maybe two, if, if I'm lucky enough to have this time, so I, I just try to to keep the routine, and this helps a lot to play cleaner on stage. Is that something that you do at home? You yes, practice yes, religiously? Yeah. What, what is like a at-home standard practice schedule? It depends. Um, I, I try to practice at least like two or three hours a day um, during the week. And uh, on the weekends, depends. So, yeah, usually I'm out with, with friends or, or my girlfriend. Yeah. So then there's not too much time for it. But, yeah, so usually two or three hours this would be great that's pretty, that's pretty <laughs> insane that's, that's good dedication yeah yeah good dedication to your instrument and uh, it shows in your playing <laughs> Thank and you. um, <laughs> I, just just a side note here uh, we we often share backstages because uh, mm. we're you know in europe <laughs> and there's not four backstages so we tend to share and they always have their guitars on they're just constantly just sweeping and <laughs> <laughs> right so so during our first tour with ingested we already had our guitars in the bus so um usually we woke up and directly went down to the relaxing area of the bus and played guitar and i think everyone was super annoyed <laughs> <laughs> the um, to go back to your saying that the, the lack of sleep on on the road uh, i agree with that and, and everyone's gonna say but you're in a tour bus you can sleep. You have your bed, but it's 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 difficult still to to get a good night's sleep, even though yeah, you're in right. a tour bus. Yeah, so um, it's like a ship, I guess. Yeah, and rocks, rocks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you f you feel every hole in the street, and sometimes it's yeah, it's it's annoying. Um, even if you sleep or lay down like ten hours, you don't really have to comfort the situation of a bed at home that's right that's so, right um, but but it's a you know I'm, I'm definitely satisfied with having a bus i appreciate having the of bus of course it versus a van best. tour and of course, uh, which of i've course. done and uh, you know and we'll probably do again but uh, i always mm. am stoked to have a bus but it still is not the the optimal you know like superstar pop touring yeah <laughs> days yeah. off because there's no days off on this tour we're 17 days in i want to say yeah and we or have 18, i know we have probably. i think like 15 more to go you guys sadly drop off before we hit the uk yeah unfortunately what why is that how did that work out so we we just booked like the the mainland tour and and somehow the the uk dates weren't included so yeah so we just did the european thing and i think it's still okay for us um you know we we have day jobs to do and we can't have so much days off from work so yeah i mean it's a bit sad that we can't do the uk tours but still we're lucky enough to be in this tour and it is what it is is that something that you guys are going to have to hit to a certain point uh, sacrifice your day jobs or how, how does your band feel about that like what do you do when you're at home um, so I'm a chemist. I studied chemistry really? in Dresden and yeah, did my bachelor and master there. And then I went on with my PhD. So I'm in the now it's the fourth year of my PhD wow. studies, and hopefully I can finish it like last uh, next year. So you're studying and working. Yeah, it's it's like a mixture of. So I'm a student, but I work still in, in the lab and try to do research. 
church and yeah and play guitar three hours a day of course <laughs> so uh, as you guys can probably hear at home um a board is about to start sound checking and uh we're just gonna keep going with it because uh if i if i don't do this then i won't do it i've been like looking for the perfect situation to get these interviews in and obviously there's always obstacles so I'm, i've decided i'm just going to do them and it's going to be what it is <laughs> so at home you're a chemist um, tell me about your life growing up as a child. I grew up in a little village next to Freiberg, which is in the east part of Germany. And so um, my parents, especially my dad, was always into music. So he's a guitarist too. And so guitars or music was always present at home. And... In the beginning, um, my parents somehow forced me or wanted me to play piano. So I played piano for like 10 years or so, but it wasn't the right instrument for me. Um, I enjoyed like all the melodies and stuff, but I didn't want to practice, which which is a bad sign. <laughs> so um, yeah, like after 10 years, I... I finished piano and... And just abandoned it. Yeah. You can, you can probably still play now a little just bit. Just a little, little bit. There's not too much left, but... And but you feel you got the, the music theory? Yeah, I, I still had the music theory and I still was interested in music. And then I just wanted to play guitar, so I grabbed my dad's guitar and... Yeah, directly the electric guitar because I want to skip the whole acoustic stuff. <laughs> and... Yeah, so I started to noodle around like I just tried to, but I I felt that uh, or I felt a certain connection to this instrument, and yeah, I just kept going, practicing, practicing. Then I went to to music school for like two years, and yeah, then at this point I already knew so I, I want to be a guitarist. <laughs> what what bands pushed you towards the electric guitar? So it's, it started out with like new metal bands like Linkin Park or something and yeah th th this got me into like heavier music and later on um, I discovered Dream Theater or before probably Metallica and then it, it was getting heavier from time to time so Metallica then then I discovered Dream Theater and the whole progressive metal progressive rock music and At this point, when, when you see John Petrucci playing the guitar, like I, I wanted to do the same, so and this pushed me so hard. So, and I tried to learn every Dream Theater song and solo <laughs> uh, that was like a available in the internet with all the guitar taps. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to be this guy, <laughs> kinda. And yeah, and, and this pushed me really hard to, to all this like guitar techniques as sweeping, tapping whatever it was and then when did the transition to more brutal occur um, he, um this this was quite late um, um first i i started doing um, a youtube account and i did some video covers and at a certain point fonso from from cytotoxin he hit me up and asked me if i want to join his band and i didn't use cytotoxin before And I didn't listen to death metal music at this point, so he sent me some demos and and stuff and and taps, and I, I was completely blown away because this was a whole other level. So um, it had this technical stuff, but the speed was I, I had no words for this. So so I had to practice a lot, a lot to to be finally able to play cytotoxin stuff and. But I, I, I like to have this challenge, and somehow it worked out. So we, so we met in the rehearsing room, and yeah, then I said, okay, I, I will join Cytotoxin. And, and how many years ago was this? Uh, this was four years ago. Okay, okay. So that's it's a, it's a four years in the world of technical death yeah. slam yeah. metal. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a similar path. I was a new metal child. Mm -hmm. My dad listened to Metallica. And I didn't like guitar solos. I thought that they were okay. for old people, <laughs> old music, until I discovered Dream Theater. Uh, and that really just opened my mind to mm. guitar solos being 
interesting and relevant in, in modern metal as well as the old school. Yeah. <laughs> but I blame the new metal because there was no guitar solos in that. Yeah. They're very minimal, more just yeah. textured effects stuff. Let's talk about beer because that's what Vox and Hops is about. <laughs> we are in Prague, so we are obviously drinking a Pilsner Jukkel. <laughs> it's not a craft beer. I'll, I'll, I'll admit to that, but it's what we had today. It's so, not so bad l- at all. Let's talk about this beer. Um, what is your impressions of it? Uh, uh, I, I know this beer, of course. Um, actually, I also drink it at home, so um, I like it. <laughs> um, yeah, so usually I, I like the Pils beer, so I think that's the most famous one in our region, so in yeah, probably in the east part of Germany. Most people drink the, the Pils beer, I guess. Um, yeah, so I, I grew up with, with this kind of beer. And I like it. I, I, I find it very drinkable. I can drink probably too many of them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, it's smooth. It's not too sweet. Uh, it seems to be extremely well balanced. It has a nice uh, color that we can't see now because we're sadly drinking from clay <laughs> cans. Um, they very nicely gave us met too many of them <laughs> last oh, yeah. night as well as tonight. Too much. I, I play this game with my wife. I haven't brought it on the podcast for a little bit, but I'm going to bring it back. If we had to describe this beer as a person, who would this beer be? Oh, my God. <laughs> um, I first have to taste. There we go. Re- refresh your mind. Hmm. Person. You you mean anyone historically can be a made up person? Um, I, I'm not sure. Maybe it, it's probably not a king. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I picture <laughs> we were in Czech Republic somewhere yesterday. I can't pronounce the name of the city. Do you know? Can you? Oh no! It was a very very U- tough. Uherska. I I don't know. Radice. Something. I, very, I, no I apologize idea. to all the, the Czech fans out there that are cursing my pronunciation of <laughs> where we were <laughs> last night. It reminds me of a big drunk dude. This beer. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> that that like <laughs> speaks too loud <laughs> and yells at me and pisses on the floor. <laughs> I don't know if you went to those bathrooms last night. Yes. Oh, oh my God. This, it was it was ridiculous. This, this was hell. It was everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. The, there were many urinals and many toilets available, and they did not hit any of them. There was just there was just piss. I the, hope, it was, on I the hope floor. it was just piss <laughs> on the floor. There was probably some oh. vomit. It was uh, yeah. It, this, it, this was, was, there, nice. it was a, a four hundred cap venue last night, and there were six hundred people there. It was insane. Yeah, and yeah. it was a Saturday night in the Czech Republic, and they were out of control. <laughs> Definitely. It was really, really intense. But, but that's also what I like about people in Czech Republic or death metal fans in Czech Republic. They are really passionate so, mm-hmm. and they like to go crazy. And I kind of like this feeling be, because it, it pushes you on stage. Oh, yeah, in the if crowd. You, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From the stage. It's afterwards that I get a bit yeah, more. Yeah, afterwards. It's like, mm, they're very, okay. in, very <laughs> intense, very intense. And passionate is the perfect word. Mm. Have you done Brutal Assault yet? No, but we will next year. Oh, so cool! Congrats. We are extremely it's looking forward to it. Like, it's, it's one of my favorite metal festivals because they 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 have always quite powerful and versatile lineups. Have you been as a fan? Um, not yet, but I I'm always watching at the flyers, and I think so. Yeah. Ah. Are you a festival junkie? No, no, definitely not. No, I I don't like festivals too much. Like it's. It's too much music for me. <laughs> uh, at a certain point, I, I get annoyed. So, like, I can't watch too many bands. Like, after the fourth band or whatever, I think I'm, I'm done with it. Your brain just becomes mush. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think I could do it either. And just the whole ambience of it. And mm. It could be fun, you know, but I, I would need more than a tent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm too <Right>. old. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, it's cool to be there with friends and, yeah, people that, that you like. But I think it for most people it's more about party exactly. than music. Exactly. And if I pay for a ticket, I want to see the bands. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm getting annoyed by people around me who just want to party or talk or or do whatever. <laughs> so um yeah, that's why I prefer to go to like single concerts than the whole festival experience. Back to the beer. Do you remember what your first experience with beer was? 
Um, yeah, sure. So um, it's a beer called Freiberger, and that's mainly the the town where where I come from, or the town which which is close to our village. And yeah, that that's the beer that everyone drinks <laughs> in in our village. And I don't know when when I had the first beer. I'm not sure anymore. Probably with thirteen or something. So. Uh, Probably around the time when I chi- uh, when I joined the, the fire brigade. So oh, that, really, yeah. So, so w- when you grew up in in a village, you, you have like two possibilities: whether you play soccer or you join the fire brigade, which both means that you will approach the beer very soon. <laughs> <laughs> so and I, I've never felt like being the, the sports guy. So and I, I kind of was always impressed by. The, the big fire brigade trucks and the whole stuff around. Is it because your village is so small that you can't have a fire department, so that everyone is a volunteer? Is yeah, right. 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 Okay. <laughs> so, so when you say you're in a, from a small village, how many people live there? Around 800. Okay, so it is tiny. Yeah. yeah. And you've li- you still live there? Um, no. Um, I moved away when I started the studies. Okay. Because there's just no yeah. <laughs> large enough school there. There, yeah. there aren't any any things you can do in this village like <laughs> i mean I, I enjoyed it of course so because it's like calm and it's peaceful but if, if you're 18 you you don't want to live in a village you want to discover the bigger cities and, and how, how do you feel about uh, once you finish your schooling and a degree and you get a job as a chemist somewhere do you feel like you'll be, still be able to tour with Saito? i hope so uh, yeah, I really, really hope to be able to tour besides work. So uh, I'm not sure if I will stay in this chemistry direction. I'm open to all. So I, I definitely want to keep the music. And so I, I have to find a job that allows touring. Some freedom, yeah. Recording, stuff like this. Um yeah, I, I'm open to all. Maybe I, I would just be a guitar teacher or a freelancer or whatever to yeah, be able to be free from music. I'm not sure yet. So You're still young. How old are you? I'm 26. There you go, yeah. 26, your second tour. That's pretty sweet. It's okay, yeah. yeah many, many sold out <laughs> gigs. It's, it's fun, yeah. 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 If you could book your dream tour... Mm-hmm. And it can't be this one. <laughs> okay. What yeah. bands would be on that bill with cytotoxin? Um, Alive, dead bands, doesn't matter. I think it would be fun to do to do a tour with Arxpire. Like, they're one of my favorite tech, tech death bands. And, yeah, I think this, this would be, like, like, a cool package. Or also Raption or, like, Inferi, I think. Or, or Beyond Creation. So, like... Kind of a tech tour, something. This this would be great. That would sound that'd be amazing. Yeah, so, <laughs> I, I love the boys in Archspire. Shout out to all of them. We'd love to have them on Vox and Hops one day. We'll cross paths soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice. And beyond creation, I'm going to get them soon. Yeah. They're they're in Europe at the we're right now. We we actually showed up at the airport. Oh really? And we were on the same <laughs> flight, all of us. Oh yeah, yeah, it was just too insane. We're we're both going on tour in Europe from Montreal, and we both flew to Zurich together, which is just it was too funny that we were all there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was a bit disappointed when when I saw that all these amazing bands are touring Europe in November. Like it's mm-hmm. between the bird and me, and Tesseract, Beyond Creation, all the bands like Revocation starting. Yeah, in a Revocation. Few weeks. Yeah. I, I think I, I will catch them in Dresden, in my hometown. That's right after our tour, but yeah, I would love to see like Beyond Creation or Between the Buried and Me. <laughs> C- can you explain to me what uh, bust slamming is? Is that the right term for it? The f- somersaulting on the bus? The <laughs> bus? What did you guys call it? Um, we just call it the the front flips. <laughs> the front flips. <laughs> the front flips. So, so, so um, we're on the bus the other night. <laughs> We're in the lounge in the basement. Uh, for everyone who doesn't know, in Europe, uh, the tour buses are double deckers, and the front, the, the bottom of the, the bus is a, like a lounge section with a bunch of seats. And we're, you know, uh, having a good time after uh, probably a great show, which most of these are. And this starts happening. Um, so the origin of the front flips um, 
they disappeared like last year when we are or when we were on the tour with Ingested and exactly the same happened. Someone turns on the music and as soon as Extermination Dismemberment, one of our favorite slam bands, as soon as this music comes, we are doing the front flips. <laughs> they, they, what they do is they, they climb up on the, the bench behind the bench, right. one seat, and then they flip forward <laughs> onto people <laughs> and onto tables. And this went on for, I want to say, at least a half an hour. Yeah, possible. But it's, it's super fun. It's, it's like <laughs> absolutely nonsense. And the day after, it hurts so bad, but it's worth it. It's yeah, stu stucky. <laughs> <laughs> Your drummer's back is yeah. just... It was like a painting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like... A, like a, it was ruined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But this just happens once in a tour. And yeah, I don't no, know. This, this tour's not over yet. <laughs> I think it's not clever to do it a second time. <laughs> I spoke about this on the last episode. Uh, we have the, the lady fights going on. Oh, yeah. Grimo, your singer, is our king right now. Do you think he will be decrowned? Um, I hope not. <laughs> I think he, he, he's a powerful king at the moment. <laughs> uh, but I hope that at least someone tries to decrone him. And just for the sake of more lady fights. <laughs> <laughs> just a quick recap of what a lady fight is. <laughs> Two men strip down naked. They tuck their penises between their legs. And then they, tr they grapple and wrestle trying to pry the other guy's penis out. So <laughs> this, is, this is the level of, of, of maturity that we're at on this run. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I've never seen or heard this before. I like, couldn't believe what's, what's going on. <laughs> it was so strange. <laughs> it's entertaining. It's a, I doubt that I'll get involved. <laughs> um, what is your craziest tour story? Craziest? Okay, pr probably the the front flip stuff okay yeah <laughs> like there's there wasn't like too much crazy stuff happening so far maybe something happens next day <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll top that we'll top that yeah. what what is the worst thing that's ever happened to you on tour maybe like last year when when we we're approaching a venue like driving for hours and hours and then you get to like a bar and there's no stage and no PA or, or whatever and like yeah, that's that's somehow like a bit sad also for the fans they're like super stoked uh, to see you playing and then none of us can enjoy it whether the band or the crowd because the venue is just like shitty yeah. <laughs> it's like thanks for booking us <laughs> mm. so yeah we, we we are super stoked for like each day and then then you maybe come to when you like hmm. oh, you you feel you don't really want to, to play there so i think that's the worst kind of and then it like reflects on your yeah. performance almost yeah it's hard for you to get into it and, uh, and the people will notice that you do not enjoy it and mm -hmm. I th yeah i think that this is sad for me or disappointing somehow because we want to give our best of course and when the circumstances not allow it then hmm. you, you guys are a very disciplined band I'll give you guys that uh, you don't party too much we, we try to you guys yeah. are very in control yeah. um, your singer Grimo is in excellent physical condition <laughs> he is he which is, is uh, <laughs> you know very intense and he, he, you had mentioned that you joined the, the fire brigade instead of the soccer team, football team. Right. <laughs> because you're not very sporty, I would imagine that he was the opposite. Of course, yeah. He, he's a soccer trainer and yeah, he, his whole life is uh, built around sport. And you guys connect through the music. Right. Because uh, would you connect outside of the music? Would, would it be strange to be friends with someone like that? Someone on the opposite spectrum, let's say? Um... I, I think this wouldn't be a problem, I guess. Um, I don't see a reason why this should not work. Mm -hmm. Do you have any musical vices, something that you're listening to now that is not tech death? or What, yeah, what is sure. the, the strangest thing that you would, that is on your playlist right now? Um, I, I'm a huge fan of Frank Zappa and progressive rock music. So, and mainly at home, I listen to progressive music. Um, 
mostly it's guitar related but I don't care if it's like rock or folk music or whatever so um, just try to be open minded and yeah to listen to music which, which is somehow interesting in, in terms of melodies notes or, or whatever or certain techniques of, of playing an instrument so and I, I don't care if it's metal or death metal so I just want to listen to interesting music and like Frank Zappa is like the best example of of a composer who can write melodies and, and music which is just mind blowing and I think a lot of guitarists appreciate this kind of music yeah, he was the master yeah. yeah I'm a huge huge Zappa fan yeah Weasel with my flesh. Right, right. That's, that's, that's the album that got me into them. What uh, is uh, your favorite album of the moment that you've been listening to the most on this tour, let's say? I, I've listened a lot to, to Terrorvision, actually. <laughs> really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's, that's the new aborted for everyone, because we don't hear it enough. You know? <laughs> right. So, um, but also, like, Oxfire. Okay. Like, yeah. Their new album is... It's it's amazing. Like I can't stop listening to it. And but also music like Tired is Murder, like Deathcore stuff. I'm also really much into it. Yeah, it depends. So you're still blasting the heavy after a full <laughs> day of death metal. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> what is um, the the best up and coming death metal band? Or tech death metal band, in your opinion? <laughs> I, I probably repeat myself, but I think Oxbire, like they're, they're the most unique tech death band. And what I, I what is it about them that you like so much? Because they are unique. That, that's what I, I like. So there are so many like tech death bands out there, but mm, some of them sound same ish. But for Oxbire, you can tell by the first second it's this band and that's what I appreciate so much it's not just the, the technical stuff I mean this is also like mind blowing but they have their sound and you, you will recognize if it's this band or not I think a lot of it has to do with um, Ollie's vocal yeah, delivery with the vocals he's like yeah. the Buster Rhymes of, <laughs> of death tech now. Yeah. and uh, he's got many interesting voices but just the, the speed of his delivery is unparalleled I can't think of anyone else that can do something like that that I've heard of <laughs> yeah it's, it's amazing and also live they're like super tight and I just saw them once last last year or this year. I'm not sure even more. Um, yeah, and they're perfect. Like they they can do their stuff. When do you think uh, the U.S. fans will get a chance to see Cytotoxin? Uh, I, I hope soon. Like we are really working on it, but it's as I already said. So with our day jobs, it's it's complicated, and I think also financial wise, it's. Yeah, it's, it's intensive. Yeah, for everyone listening, what, what would be some of those financial hurdles that you'd have to overcome? Um, like the visa is really expensive for Europeans. Then, of course, the flights. And then we have to get like our own camper or van. And like, you have to print shirts, CDs, whatever. And you probably need a driver and a merch guy maybe or a sound guy so there are many people involved it's like thousands and thousands um, of dollars yeah so uh, and we we just played our second tour so we are not that experienced with with touring and i think touring in in the u.s is different compared to it's, it's, there's less food that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> there, there won't be no hummus sandwiches when you show up oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we all love hummus sandwiches <laughs> yeah, you're probably uh, another surprise I think most of your band is vegan yes right minus uh, your drummer who's a vegetarian yes I think this is the first time that I've ever toured with a band where the, you were don't, none of them eat meat and how, how did this occur in your life if you feel like talking about that uh, when did you make the decision to become a vegan so uh, I was a vegetarian like for two years and I, I've never been so much into meat and all this animal <laughs> flesh stuff <laughs> and yeah then I just tried to do it like like an experiment so I want to be a vegan for like one month and this worked out so I started like 
last year, one year ago, approximately. And yeah, I, I kind of like this experiment. And I just kept going on. And being, now it's being, like being a chemist, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's all about the experiments. Yeah. And so now it's one year of vegan nutrition and I'm, I'm totally in it. I like it. Uh, I feel better somehow or like don't feel that that heavy or well i remember days when you just eat like too much steak and then you have stomach ache for like two days or something this, this can't happen if you eat vegan mm -hmm. and I, i i just feel that everything is smoother now for me and yeah and do you find it difficult on the road so far being vegan Okay, yeah, that, that's a difficult part. So luckily the, the aborted guys are like vegans too, or mostly at least. So this, this helps a lot because the, the promoters are like forced to <laughs> accommodate, bring, accommodate bring some, us, yeah, yeah. some vegan food. But yeah, on tour it's, it can be difficult. Yeah, be, because not all the promoters know what it means to be vegan. So they think you can eat cheese. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like this. Yeah. Um, Here's your protein. But so far it's never been a big problem so sometimes we are very hungry but it, it's all right you're very disciplined you won't you won't go and eat that cheese um no that's good that's good yeah first time i say it on the podcast i am a vegan i have been the same sort of path as that you mentioned that uh you know like I, i went for at least two three years of not wanting to have a label but I wouldn't eat meat except for special occasions. And then about a year and a half ago now, I've switched and I'm a vegan. And it's, 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 I don't miss meat. I miss cheese. Yes. Cheese, yes. cheese, <laughs> cheese is the best. <laughs> wait, wait, I, I still miss it. So, uh, you know, I don't eat it, but it's still there in the back of my mind. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but I, it, feel, I feel the same. Yeah. Like, so sometimes, so... <laughs> I, I I would like to eat it, but then I think uh, it's it's not worth it. So. No, and it might hypothetically give us stomach issues. And riding in that bus, you don't want stomach issues because uh, if you don't know, on a tour bus you can pee, <laughs> but you cannot poo. So and sometimes you can't stop to poo, so you have to hold it, <laughs> which is very unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's been easy on this tour being a vegan, though, because, as you said, uh, the aborted dudes are mostly vegan, and uh, we've been very well taken care of, and, you know, from the beginning to the end, uh, the catering when we show up to the suppers and the after-show food, we've been very blessed and very fortunate, and... Because I've had situations where you, you pull up at a gas station and there's nothing. So that, that's also one thing that I like so much about this tour. Like the organization is is perfect. It, uh, so at least for for us, so we we get food like two or three times a day, and everything is so smooth and well organized. And yeah, I really enjoy it. Yeah, you'll be shocked when you hit the states. Oh my god, because <laughs> it is not like that. Yeah. You show up and there is a, a case of water, if you're lucky, <laughs> and oh uh, that's it. <laughs> well, why is this? <laughs> it's just a, a different approach to appreciating artists. They, they're just, they'll give you a buyout and it's up to you to go okay. purchase yeah. what you need with this agreed upon number. Yeah, so Interesting. depends on the tour, depends on who's negotiated your tour. I've had good, I've had, Yeah. <laughs> Even touring with Cannibal, we had, you know, it was a minimal budget and a bag of Tostitos with some salsa and some bananas, our <laughs> case of beer, our case of water, and our towels, and a dinner buy it. yeah. So on this tour, honestly, I've spent no money versus a U.S. tour, I would spend money. Me too, yeah. yeah. What, what, what's coming up next for Cytotoxin? So I think we are pretty much in songwriting mood Kay. again, and of course we, we want to make a new record as soon as possible and we are collecting ideas writing riffs and rehearse new material so far there's not really a plan to release an album yet but i think we're, we're getting in this mood now where because you released uh, your last album last year yeah in the summer, summer. yeah yeah summer of 2017 right yeah yeah so it'd be time for a new one yeah yeah Yes, so we don't really want to put any pressure on us. The, the album will be released when the right time is there. So we, we 
we don't have a certain time frame to say every two years it has to be an album so we just want to make it like perfect and it, it should always be like the best you can get and not just something because time is running out that's um, a, it's a wonderful wonderful <laughs> approach and uh, I'm not surprised by <laughs> the way I've seen your work ethic. Mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't surprise me that you guys want to approach it that way. What, what label are you guys on? We are um, on Unique Leader okay. Records. Okay. So probably the, like, the biggest brutal yeah. or death metal label in the US or maybe in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So they must definitely want you over there. Um, so we, we had a three record deal and two CDs are already out, so this will probably be the, the last um, album with Unique Leader, I guess. So, in, in terms of the uh, contract. This contract, yeah. Uh, is you, I don't know if you could talk about this. Do you, would you like to stay there? Would you rather go somewhere bigger? Um, I, I don't know yet, so just depends on yeah, what, what will happen after the contract is like finished and I, I have no I have no idea so so far um, I don't know <laughs> that's well, time will tell yeah yeah no, that's amazing I mean it always depends on how we can go on as as a band so just in case someone wants to have a family maybe I mean this can like push back the band a bit so I, I don't know what's happening in the future of course we want to go on but I mean, I, I can also understand if some one of us says that, like, I want to have a family, I want to focus on my job, and this would be, like, I could understand it. And, yeah, so I'm, I'm just grateful for the time we have together, and, yeah, I just enjoy it. How, how do you feel about bands replacing people and continuing without them? Um, it's okay for me, I guess. Um, like as a it, session it, it, or it, if I mean, someone it, like... It depends who it is. So, mm -hmm. uh, for singers, I think it's like difficult to replace them um, because probably the, the singers or front, front guys, they, they're the face of a band and... I, I don't know. Especially Grimo, he's, he's such yeah. a... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I could never... You'd have to like, imagine to find, find someone else that <laughs> just came out of the gym and... <laughs> yeah, there, there are certain guys, I think you, you can't replace them. And for, like, the other instruments, it depends. I think there are so many good musicians out there and sometimes it can be like a, a huge opportunity for a band if they replace a, a certain member and suddenly... The, this guy or instrumentalist can push the band like, even further. Yeah, yeah. even further. Right. Um, yeah, it depends who it is. Yeah, because I was about the because none of you do you have a family at this point. No, no you're all no. young enough to mm, right. keep going for a little while. I yeah. mean, it's it's like like a soccer team, so they constantly replace um, their their players, and you can still be a fan of a certain club <laughs> and no one cares so and I think for music I mean you can't really compare it but I think it's the same you no I understand yeah yeah it's hard replacing people I, uh, yeah. I, I went through replacing someone and mm. <laughs> it was a tough transition and uh, I think it's taken us about 10 years to rebuild to somewhat where the band was so uh, I, I can feel that yeah yeah well, thank you for sitting down with me. Thank you for It was a good this. chat. <laughs> Drinking a nice Pilsner Jürgen with me. It's, it's, it's a good drinkable beer, and I will probably have a few more after the show tonight. I think so, too. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to a sold-out show in Prague. Here we go. Thank you, Matt. Hell over Europe. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for listening to Vox and Hops, episode number 16. I had a blast chatting with Jason, such a nice, soft-spoken guy. Um, I apologize for the um, sound check that was going on in the background, but as I mentioned during the 
the interview. I wanted to just continue doing interviews because uh, as the tour was progressing, I kept, you know, trying to find this perfect location to pull off these interviews and uh, it just wasn't happening and I didn't want to lose the interviews versus having a perfect interview. So uh, I'm still working. I'm always trying to get things better. So please be patient with me. I feel like uh, the content of the interviews are interesting and I think that's what's important to share with all of you. So uh, that being said, coming up on the next episode um, is uh, Julien Truchat from Benighted. He is an excellent, excellent front man, and I have to say he is the nicest person I have ever toured with. Always a smile on his face. Every morning he greets you with a hug. Such a nice dude. Check all that out on Vox and Hops, episode number 17, next week. As always, if you want to become a sponsor of Vox and Hops, if you have any ideas, if you have any questions, reach out to me at matt at voxandhops.com and I'll get back at you. I hope you all have a great week. Drink some great beers. Message me. Tell me what beers you're drinking. I'm interested. Cheers. See you next week. Oh,